you know, I know when you when you guys did um, went to New Beginnings and you know, the production changed. You got different producers and stuff. Um, was there any concern about losing your, your fans because who got used to the sound you had in about time? And when you you moved, yet um, did you did you have anything with Puffy? Was that um, with Puffy someone, and someone? Someone, yes, yeah. So it was a sort of different, but it, yeah, it was sort of different. I mean, I still had all, I bought all the albums, but I'm just wondering, did you want to worry about uh, fans might think, oh, this is not like Week and, 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 uh, and our first album? No, no, because um, when, you, when you are creative, you want to do just that. You want to be creative. And it's almost impossible to recreate something like weak. You know what I mean? Like, we already gave you that. Now it's time to move on to something else. But of course, I don't think we ever strayed too far away from what the fans enjoy. Now, I do say that that third record, that release some tension record was horrible. <laughs> With that record, that record was so bad. And I think, you know, that was actually after, you know, they made some label changes and mm -hmm. the guy, uh, the A&R who found SWV and all of those amazing records, for some reason, they let him go and brought somebody else in who totally destroyed that album. Mm -hmm. And he knows how I feel about that today. So I ain't saying nothing. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, you shit, don't take my word for it. Look at it. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it sells, yeah. I felt like that was a waste of our budget. I felt like, you know, it was all of these damn rappers featuring SWB. I felt like we was on somebody else's album. Yeah. And it was a waste of our budget, you know? It was just that, oh, just the thought. Rain saved that record. Yeah. Rain saved that record because that was the only reason I listened to that record. I ain't played nothing <laughs> except for, I think it was a song on there called On and On. Andrea Martin wrote that song. Mm -hmm. God rest her. Soul. Yeah, and um, everything she did I thought was dope, but yeah. the album just had all of these rappers on there and I'm like, the, ugh. I just thought it was stupid. It was very dumb business wise. Like, why would you do that? You know, and and you know, and you know, you know. I know we all love Redman and 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 the rest, but I know that it it's it show it's it was the prelude of what happened to R and B, where they started to put more hip hop, and hip hop almost became okay, because you guys almost pretty much ushered in the fact that we got a hip hop artist singing R and B. And we get the R&B artists featuring because that then became the norm, which it's still unfortunately the dominant part then. And and I think that's more and more we lost the essence of, of you guys with, with, with a lot of those tracks that were, that were being pushed out. And mm -hmm. um, and yeah, that that that, that was. A, but but you couldn't fight it. You you know it's hard. You know I think we would wonder if you guys could could fight it or do anything. You just had to accept what's what the label, what they, how they spend the money? I mean, pretty, pretty much. I mean, you can give them a hard time, but for what? When they have all the control. Okay, you want to give me a hard time? We're going to push this record back. Yeah. So if we don't have a record, we don't, we can't tour, we can't make money. Yeah. You know, so it ain't but so much you can do with the person that got the purse. When, when you, when the person got the bag, what you going to say? Yeah. It's been a journey, you know? So, but I, I've always been verbal about the fact that I thought that that album was whack. But then it, it was that the last album you did with RCA then? Because it didn't do as well as the first two. I want to say that was. Yeah. And it should Because that was terrible. Yeah. And a guy who put that record together should have been fired. I, I don't think it was long after that he got fired, but... He should have gotten fired. <laughs> yeah. But then what, because I know a year after the album comes out, that's when 
you guys took your hi- hiatus and mm-hmm. stuff. Um, what is that like? Because, as you said, if you're not a featured songwriter, producer on your albums, so you're, you're collecting all the publishing and stuff, and you're relying on, on tour, when uh, the label who has been your home for almost 10 years says, okay, you know, not, not even up to 10 years, you know, you know seven, eight years, says, you know, we're, we're dropping you guys. What, what do you do then as, a, as, as Lily? <laughs> Well, Lily, I, I pretty much um, went into my sunken place because it was like a marriage to me. And then that's when I realized that somebody had so much control. They controlled my mind. They controlled whether I moved forward in my career or not. Like that was just the turning point for me. And I was young. Like I was doing this longer than I wasn't. You know, so I went to that sunken place and that's when the, all the suicidal thoughts started happening and I was just going to just take it all out. I was going to eat and do it because I couldn't face a lot of the stuff that I was dealing with. I didn't want to. I didn't want people to see me any different than what they, than how they knew me and how they met me. And now that was taken away from me. Wow. You know what I mean? But, um... It took for that to happen for me to to turn into and blossom into the woman that I am today. That was really a turning point for me mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and physically because something like that could just suck the life out of you. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I lost weight. Like I just, I didn't, I had no identity. I didn't know who I was. I I didn't even know my name. My first name didn't mean shit to me. The name that my mother gave me didn't mean shit to me because I got so stuck on fans calling me Lily, Lily, Lily. So Leanne. Oh, Leanne, I'm sorry. (laughs) You forgot? No, but yeah, because, yeah, that's, I forget it's a stage name. We just. (laughs) You know, so even to me, like it was one of those things like, oh my God. And I had to realize, yo, I am somebody. Like, this doesn't define me. This is just a chapter in my life and in, in my journey. And you don't think about that until you're in that sunken place. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I got a job. I got everything. Listen, y'all ain't getting all of this stuff. Y'all better get this book. I, I got to get this book. This book. <laughs> Has everything, uh, has everything you want to know in it. Is it I regret the day I lost my virginity? I regret the day I lost my virginity. You are not your past. And all of these stories that I'm telling you is all in here in depth. Like, I, this was my therapy. This was... This was the the thing that I did that belongs to me. I own 100% of my book and every word that I say in here. So I was very proud of this. And um, it it took me out of bondage because I I was broken. I was broke. I I didn't know who I was. I didn't know where I was going. I didn't know anything. Within our community, and as uh, you know, even though my family is African, uh, Nigerian, but but as Black, m- mental health talking, um, and and showing vulnerability, is something that it almost seems like a taboo. And the fact that you're sharing this is really important because, even because as a therapist, I'm one of the only Black male therapists in in my account. Well, in, in working with young ch- with children. Very few of our patients are black because as families, they don't accept. So the fact that you're sharing this is is really powerful. But how did you get, who helped, who reached out to pull you out of that? that, um, Because it's, you know, most of us, you know, the industry you worked in, they're cutthroats. Friends might have been, you might have tried to hide from people. And you um, and. Your, your, your rock and your, as of, of your mom had, had passed. Um, did, 
who reached out did you have? Who, who could you turn to? Well, I've always had my family to turn to, but a lot of things that was going on with me, my family didn't know about. Wow. They had no idea, you know? So I had to deal with this stuff alone. And I, I made up my mind that this was going to be the day that I checked myself out of here. I was committing and comfortable with the fact that I was going to take my life. And um, I remember making one, two calls. I said I was going to call my sisters to, to tell them to just, you know, I love them, take care of my kids. And um, my sister didn't answer the phone the first time. But my other sister answered the phone as soon as I called. And it was like a divine intervention. She said, just come home. Just come home. And just crying. We're both boo-hooing on the phone. Just crying. And she's like, just come home, sis. Come home. And it just kind of gave me like a calm to the point where I, when I say I've never cried myself to death like I if if me hurting myself wasn't going to take me out I felt like all of these all this crying was going to take me out because I cried so much my whole body was dry like I was so dehydrated my mouth was like foaming and it was just crazy but I there was a light at the end of that phone call it was a light at the end of that phone call. And I chose life. I chose to live. And at the time, I was staying in a hotel. I ran out of money. I couldn't afford to get another day at, at the hotel, the Marriott Hotel. That's why I love the Marriott to this day, because me and the Marriott have a connection. <laughs> <You know? laughs> we have like yeah, you know, you know what we went through, Marriott. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, so I went back in that room and I just I literally beat myself up. Like I I cursed myself out. How dare you 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 gonna do something so selfish, you you fucking coward, like you, you just making, you know, you're making the devil happy by doing all of these things and, you, and your thoughts are crazy and you weren't raised this way, but you just want to take yourself out. You're weak. You are losing. Like I was saying all kinds of shit to myself in the mirror. Like I was literally looking at myself like you a coward just crying. And then the cry ended up being, it ended up turning into laughter. <laughs> It became funny. I'm like, what the hell was I thinking? And that's how I know that. I don't know. The presence of God to me is, is so real. Because my dark moment, I was just dark 30 minutes ago. I wanted to check out. And now I'm laughing. I'm, I'm smiling. I love who I see now. And I chose to live. When I walked out of that hotel room, it was like I never thought about anything that I was thinking an hour ago. Mm. Because when I said out my mouth that I'm, cho I'm choosing to live, I've got a lot of shit to do on this planet before you know God take me home. Like I ain't gotta take myself out. God is gonna help me out with that, but at his time, that's what it was for me. And my life changed instantly. I got a job. I went home, like my sister said. I, I spent the night at her house. I was staying with her. And the crazy thing was, I wasn't making the money that I was making when I was with my group. But I was making $10, $11 an hour. But I was so peaceful. And that's why I always tell people who complain about their jobs, 
You do what you have to do until you can do what you want to do. Stop fucking complaining because your shit can be different. Your story can be a lot different. I went through making money to making $10, $11 an hour. I have no car. I did a voluntary repo. I took everything back that I felt like didn't belong to me. Honestly, like I'm like, fuck this car, fuck this, fuck that. And you know, I didn't care. I'm like, if God had blessed me the first time, he'll bless me with it again. And he's done that over and over again. But you have to speak life into your own situation. And that's what I did. That's what my mother did for me. And that's what I did for myself. And that's when I, I realized that I was dope. I was amazing. I, it it takes an amazing person to be ridiculed in front of a lot of people, see you working at an office job and they just call your extension just to hear your voice because they the superstars ha has a job now. You know, she ain't shit no more. She's just like us, which I've always been. But it didn't matter what they were saying because I was at peace. I knew how much money I was going to make. I knew what I was bringing home. I knew if I bust this clock down and I put in all this overtime, what I was going to make. So I started slowly. I said, okay, I ain't got no car, but the first thing I'm going to get is a car. So I bust up. I was doing 18 hours, 14 hours, like at this job. And every two weeks I got paid, I was able to do something different. The first two weeks I was able to get me a car. It was a piece of shit, but it was a car and it was a blessing and I got it. So I knew once I got that car, the car was gonna get me to my money. It's gonna get me more money because I can always drive the car and push come to shove, you know, you lose your place, you can always sleep in your car. And that's why I tell people today, like cars are special. I look at cars different. That's why I always buy a truck. I never buy a truck because shit, if shit go bad, I'll sleep in this damn truck. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you know, but you know, I can laugh about it now and, um, because I'm free. I'm free from it. And that's why I don't mind talking about it because I need to free somebody else mm -hmm. and let them know that they are not their past. Like they are strong and don't always look for people, for validation in people because you may never get it. You mm -hmm. may never get it, you know? So, so I've, you know, I've, I've had people call and say they're just about to walk to a train station and jump in front of a train and I've had to, you know, and, and, and I realized back in those early days when I used to do crisis, you can't tell them, oh, what about your family? Because when you've made up your mind, family, me. kids means nothing. You're almost thinking they acted, they're going to be better off without me. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so it's, you have to think something else, not, you can't just, you know, you have to, because the whole thing is I failed everybody and, and by going, they're going to be better off. And, and you can't reason with, with, with someone like that. But the fact that you didn't have any, ex, well, I won't say external intervention, you, 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 you had a divine intervention to, to switch. That's not an easy switch. That, that mm -hmm. going from 20 to end your life to saying, mm -hmm. no, I need to shape up. And, you know, that's, that's a movie. You know, someone would say, oh, that's a movie, like a guardian agent stuff. It's definitely a movie. And hopefully lifetime, I want to tell this story. But um, my whole mission, man, I, just kind of thinking about everything I went through in my life and how things turned out and how I was able to just keep myself afloat and just, just stay alive. Because I just think about how different things could have been. And that's why everything that I do today is intentional. I'm not feeling bad for myself. I'm not feeling bad for people because I'm like, yo, if I did it, it, it ain't that hard for you. You mm. know what I mean? I just think we have to make up our mind to do it. You know? And no, it's not going to always be easy. It wasn't easy for me. 
but I made up my mind to do it. I put one foot in front of the other and I did it. Where, where did that come from? That Because that's, you're talking about the degree of humility that even us who have never been in the spotlight will struggle with. Um, for, for, for somebody who dominated the charts, who was, you know, you, 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 you went to one hit wonder. You, you, you came out with, you, you know, you had one of the biggest singles of the decade. Very recognizable, and you're getting a, a job, and you and and you are appreciating, you know, ten, eleven bucks an hour, and, and and thinking small steps to big steps. Where did that come from? Because it's very few people who even who aren't famous would do that. But how? Where, where did that sense of humility come from? I think um, I finally start loving myself. Because I had to realize that I started, I wanted, I looked for validation in men. I looked for if he didn't think I was pretty or if I wasn't chosen, it would depress me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And, um, you know, you, you men, you have a choice. And this is all when I was a teenager. But um, I had to learn how to love myself. And I realized I didn't love myself for a long time because I didn't know what that felt like, you know? I didn't know what loving myself meant until I was, until I had to stand alone, literally. I was alone. Nobody knew what was going on with me. They just knew that the group wasn't together, but they didn't know what was going on with me. I was alone. I would talk to myself. I would give myself every reason I should be here. Then in my darker moments, I gave myself every reason that I should just die. Oh, they'll be, they'll be okay without me. They don't give a fuck anyway. You know, like, oh, life will just go on. No one to miss me. Eh. But all of that changed. Like you can either look at the glass half empty or look at it half full. And then I had to tell myself that I was so dope. Hmm. I'm telling you, like I literally had to tell myself, I, I was thinking of all of these different things that was great about me. And I'm like, damn, you know, it's more great stuff in me than not. Why am I angry? Why am I so mad? And that's why I'm big on energy today. Because you can be happy and then the, the spirits are coming around you and you just get angry. You start doing shit that you wasn't thinking about doing before. And you're like, ugh, you know? But it's so important that we love ourselves. It's so important that we tell ourselves that we're dope. We tell ourselves that we're beautiful. We tell ourselves that there was, there's somebody in this world that's going to love me the way I love myself. And, and that's, and, and I've never been married, but I'm waiting for that guy that will love Leanne like Leanne loves herself. And until that happens, I will not be married. I will be single. <laughs> yeah. Because this is a lot of love I give myself, honey. Like it's, 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 it's overwhelming sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. You know? So I, you know, I have a seven-year-old grandbaby who's going to be eight, and I want her to not have to depend on anybody's love. I want her to be able to do like this and know that this is enough. This is enough because you may not get it. Yeah. And if you don't get it, what you going to do? You're going to be a coward like your grandmother would have been? And take yourself out and get mad because no one wants to love you. So what? Nobody don't have to love you. But you have to love yourself. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe to the channel. But most importantly, to press the notification bell so that you can be notified when we do have a new interview. Loads to come. But thanks a lot for watching.